minutes himself for five minutes of questions. And I will say this to the witnesses. I, I prepared a list of questions for all three of you. But during the ranking member's opening statement, as I shared with him on the floor, um, my mind went away from the questions and I went back uh, to South Carolina in the very same month, the very same year, that the IRS was conferencing in Anaheim. We were furloughing law enforcement officers. We were furloughing teachers. Prosecutors in my own office were fur furloughed. Secretaries in my own office were furloughed. Those are secretaries who struggle to make ends meet under the best of circumstances. And here we're asking them to go two weeks without pay, and we canceled all out-of-town training. We brought our own food to our Thanksgiving and Christmas office socials. We started an anonymous fund to help our fellow employees who were struggling to make ends meet. And one night, one of my secretaries came in after hours and asked if she could borrow the money to buy her child a birthday present. And she kept apologizing for having to do it. She kept saying, I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. And at exactly the same time, that young government employee, single mom, was borrowing money for a child's birthday present. Other government employees were staying in $3,500 a night rooms. Other government employees were spending more money on promotional materials than that young woman makes in a year. And other government employees were spending more money on audience participation tools than that young woman makes in a year. So, Mr. Inspector General, I appreciate the work that you've done. But with all due respect, this is not a training issue. This cannot be solved with another webinar. This can't be solve with just one more recommendation. If we can just get that recommendation implemented, we're just one recommendation away from people acting responsibly. Mr. Inspector General, we can adopt all the recommendations you can possibly conceive of. I'll just tell you, it strikes me, and maybe it's just me, but it strikes me as a cultural, systemic, character, moral issue. The IRS has been in existence, depending on how you want to count, either since 1862 or 1918. But in either event, they've had a hundred years to figure out that while your fellow Americans are losing their jobs and their health insurance and their homes, you do not spend $4 million at a conference for which there is no accountability. You do not hire people to make meaningless speeches or artists to paint paintings of Bono. When your fellow citizens, the ones who pay your salary, are struggling, that is a character issue. Training cannot fix that. They sent more than 25 employees on a scouting trip to see whether or not the hotel was okay. That's not going to be fixed with training, Mr. Inspector General. When you've got law enforcement officers being furloughed and you've had 100 years to figure out how to act appropriately, you don't need an IG report to tell you that spending $27,000 for someone to talk about how random combinations of ideas can drive radical innovations, there's not a webinar in the world that's going to fix that. So, Mr. Inspector General, in reality, it just strikes me that we just need one single recommendation. Start over. This entity has not only targeted citizens that it was supposed to serve, it's allowed itself to be used as a political tool. Not only does it have access to our financial information, it will soon have access to our health information. Those are details that we don't share with people that we do trust. 
and we are going to be asked to share it with people who are so disconnected as to spend this amount of money while our fellow citizens are struggling mightily in the fall of 2010. I don't think training is going to fix it. I think replacement might. With that, I would recognize the gentleman from North Carolina.